you know, clearly back in the 40s, this was before DSAG, so segregation was in, in full effect. And uh, my father went to a K-12 colored school um, in East Texas. And, you know, if you see the picture kind of blown up, you'll notice most of the kids in that picture don't have shoes on. You know, it's not not something they had. You know, it's farmland, it's lumber, lumber, kind of timber country, if you will. Cotton was around there, but they were, you know, you hear about kind of one, two room schoolhouses, kind of for, for you all, it's probably, you know, in your history books is something long forgotten, uh, but it really wasn't that long ago. And so for me, this is something that drives me. It, it My son sees it, he, he knows where his, uh, his poppy is in the picture, um, and it's it's something that uh, makes me do what I want to do, makes me passionate about um, educating children and STEM and all of these things that, that I'm, I'm interested in. Um, you know, I love kids. I've been, like I said, this is year 24 for me. I'm a chemistry teacher uh, by training my undergraduate degree and my master's is in chemistry. Uh, my my PhD is in science education, so I I, I spent a lot of time working with teachers and and people who wanted to become teachers on how to teach science and, and good pedagogy and all those sorts of things. So I'm a STEM nerd. I'm, I'm a principal of a, of a of a STEM school, and I'm I'm proud of that. My kids are great. You know, I love them to death. Uh, you, you you know you kind of live and die through their successes and their challenges. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll be be quite transparent. Today was was. Uh, a heck of a day. I had a student who went into anaphylaxis this morning and had to be given two EpiPens. I had to go to the emergency room with him and his parents. And so I was sitting in the hospital for about three hours uh, today uh, with a student because uh, it's what needed to be done um, and wanted to make sure he was okay. And he is. And, um, you know, has a peanut allergy and apparently something he um, had purchased um, had, had come in contact with maybe peanut oil and uh, caused an issue for him. And that was, uh, if you know anaphylaxis, it's quite severe and it's quite serious. And so anyway, so so for me, my, my story's pretty, pretty it may, it may, may run uh, true for some of you. Uh, clearly I'm an African-American male, grew up in Delaware in Pennsylvania, was always in love with science and math, not just because my father taught, taught math, but I have a lot of of STEM folks in my family. My godfather was a chemist, lots of family friends were, were scientists. And so for me, uh, growing up, I know my second grade teacher, Mrs. Poindexter, was the reason why I love science. Um, I clearly remember her uh, demonstrating the scientific method um, when she asked us to explain how you would make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And we proceeded to destroy a loaf of bread and uh, a container of peanut butter, just trying to get it open without giving really explicit directions. But for me, that was really cool. And I remember that clearly to this day. And that that was for me the tipping point on, on why I like what I, what I do. And so from that point on, I've always been um, a pretty interesting kid, very much interested in, in hands-on stuff you know, chemistry sets and, and microscopes and all those sorts of things, you know, things that kind of mold you. Everyone here, everyone, just to be clever, everybody's in high school right now, right? In this, in this, okay. So for me, I, I look at high school, I look at middle school. Fondly is not always the word that comes to mind. I was typically the only black kid in my gifted and talented classrooms, taking my advanced, uh, out of my high school at AP, but taking advanced coursework, I was typically not typically, I was only, and I clearly know this, um, the only minority in my advanced placement classes my junior and senior year. Um, and for me, that, that was something I paid attention to. You, you're always trying to kind of find yourself in high school. I have a 15-year-old. He's a sophomore in high school. Um, and I know those are some, some of the things that I know he, he talks about and we talk about and just trying to figure out your place in all of this. And I... Um, and so for me, it was it was challenging. I didn't always necessarily feel great about myself. Um, and that comes with age and experience and some of the um, experiences that I, I went through in, in terms of things that were said to me by my peers and in the community and things like that. You know, you remember, you know, they kind of, uh, they, they, uh, they toughen you up or, or you, you, you fold. Um, and for me, it, it was important that I um, I took those things to really, took them to heart, figured out what did I need to be comfortable and be happy. So my, my high school, um, I know we've got people from our, 
I'm assuming around the country. I don't know how far, uh, how far and wide we go. So, so my high school, I'm here in Virginia. It's what's called a governor school. It's think of it as a, um, especially high school. Some may use the term magnet. It's a little bit different than a magnet school, but I have kids from uh, 15 different high schools that attend my school uh, for half the day. And so they're, for all intents and purposes, college kids with me, uh, taking college level courses, you know, up through things like linear algebra and, and anatomy, physiology, and organic chemistry. And these are the same courses that um, college kids, your 18, 19, 20 year olds are taking in college, the exact same course. Um, so, so they all have um, advanced ability in STEM, um, but then they go back to their, their regular high school for the second half of the day to do, um, you know, the rest of their courses and sports and all those sorts of things. And so, you know, when I'm counseling, you know, these, my students, you know, we, we talk about finding your fit and finding um, what you're passionate about and, and what drives you. And I get it, you're 15, 16, 17 years old. You, you don't have all the answers, but you certainly know things you perhaps like or maybe don't like. And so you you, you got to explore and, and figure out what it is that really drives you and what, what you like to do. I was fortunate and figured out pretty early that I like chemistry. You know, not everybody's going to figure that out, you know, but I went off to college and, you know, kind of when I was making my decisions about where I wanted to go, um, like I said, I, I went to high school in Pennsylvania, just outside Philadelphia. It was kind of about 30 minutes outside the city. And, and for me, I remember the process I went through was about where would I be happy for four or five years? Um, where would I best fit in? You know, name is certainly important, but I think being comfortable in your community and being comfortable in your own skin, more important, you, you'd hate to go somewhere and hate it and be miserable. You know, life's too short to, 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 to be unhappy. So for me, it, it came down to, I was looking at Georgetown, Chapel Hill and Morehouse. And for me, Morehouse was the best fit, you know, help that they gave me a pretty good financial package. You know, I still love Chapel Hill, but for me, I wouldn't change it, and, you know, change anything. I, I'd go back there a hundred times out of a hundred because for me, it was the place I needed to, to grow and to be, um, gain some self-confidence and be comfortable with who I am. And so it, it, you know, that process that you guys are going through or go through in high school, lots of challenges, lots of ups and downs, you know, you, you can't solve every problem all the time. Um, you know, I talk about, talk to my students all the time about trying to manage time and manage expectations and uh, be realistic. And, and so that's really the, and one of the things that you guys have to think about is, is what is it that um, you can figure out that, that drives you? And what is it that you can, can handle, you know, control the things in your sphere, right? You can't control necessarily what your friends are doing. You, you can't control sometimes what your parents do or sometimes what they say but you certainly can control your actions and your, and your work. And that's a critical piece, you know, cause I know I can't do everything for everyone as much as I may try. It's, it's kind of a hopeless venture. Um, and so I really do try to focus on what's in my scope of responsibility, what's in my, my realm to be able to do and to be that beacon for, for kids, um, to say something nice to them, you know, when they may be having a bad day or help them out or answer a question and, just smile because we all have bad days. Like you said, my morning was pretty miserable, but uh, I still know I have work to do and I still have responsibilities here at home. And I still have um, things that I think are really fun that have nothing to do with work, you know, interest outside of work and family and, and loved ones and all those sorts of things. And so that's really a lot of what, what I try to do. So when I went from college to graduate school, um, I, like I said, I went up to Cornell you know, my, my advice has always been for college, go somewhere that you fit in and can be really comfortable. Grad school um, is a little different. I think, you know, for grad school, the best advice I got was to go somewhere, go to the best place you can get into, right? Because certainly, you know, name plays a bigger role and, and I know money is always a part of it, you know, finances and things like that, but it certainly helps open doors and things like that. But you also start to figure out, you know, what are you doing at this point? How are you going to work? Where are you going? What, where do you need to live? You know, what kind of area do you have to, you know, when you guys are looking at colleges, you know, are you looking at small cities? Are you looking at town, college towns? Are you looking at big cities? Are you looking at really rural? I mean, these are all things you have to figure out. What do you need to be happy? Um, I know I don't, I don't like rural. That's you know, that's not what I need. I like being you know either near a city or around a city, having access to things. But if that's not your 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 thing, then then don't go there. And so, so going off to grad school the first time, you know, it was about that. It was about doing work. It's about trying to to check that box, to open doors, to figure out what I wanted to do, you know, in my life. 
And I, I've always loved education. I'm, I'm a, I wanted to coach and I wanted to do things that involved students. You know, I wasn't necessarily looking to work with like elementary age kids. Um, that's a little too young for me. Um, I know my patience level with certain things, but I wanted to coach track and field and cross country and all of these things that I did. And, um, and so that's what I did. I started really looking at what were opportunities and options for me to do that and to be happy and to find somewhere where I would be valued and, and kids would respect the things that, that I could say or, or help them do. And so as you guys are, are, you know, kind of matriculating through high school and starting to look off to college, you know, if we have seniors in the room, you guys are starting to get college acceptances and things like that. Cause I know my, my kids are, it's exciting. It's an amazing time. And so you've got some challenging decisions ahead, you know, if you've got multiple offers and, but these are all part of the process and we've all done it. And it's really going to ultimately rely on you to figure out, you know, what do you need to, to be happy towards that next step for whatever it is that you're going to do. And so as I've kind of come through my career um, from a first year teacher to now um, being a principal, it's, um, I look back at it fondly. You know, I, I love my, I love, I call, we call them kids. You know, if you have teachers, you know, we, we call you all our kids. And that's a term of endearment because I would do anything for them. Because you do, you, you know, teachers spend, you know, sometimes more time with you than your parents do. And so it's it's something that I uh, I love. And, you know, use those tools you guys have. You know, you've got teachers that really do care about what you're doing. And as you start trying to figure out your next steps, you know, find those teachers that you you. Um, are comfortable with and, and can confide with um, and ask them questions and ask for their support and opinions. And, um, you know, those are those important things. I think um, I know those are the things that I remember having those types of conversations with my students and the little things and their little quirks and my little quirks. And it's a pretty cool thing. Um, but for me, again, my, my journey has always been about trying to help, help that next person and, and, and really trying to uh, be aware of and not assume that you know all their challenges. Everyone has them, um, but at least being empathetic to uh, the things that that you know you're going through. And you know, I've had students experiencing homelessness and food insecurities and lots of really really challenging things. And and for me, it's all about okay, well, what can I do to help? You know, if I can, I will. And so, you know, at graduation every year, I talk about looking at the next person and what are you doing to pay it forward? Because um, certainly you're, you're standing on the shoulders of someone to get to the point where you are. Um, you know, if it's not your parents, maybe it's your friends or counselors or whomever, um, but you've had help at some point or another to get wherever it is you are. Um, and so that's kind of, kind of in a nutshell, who I am. You know, I'm, I'm a pretty fun guy. I am, like I said, I, I'm very thankful and, and, and like I said that, that picture of my father that I showed you um, is what drives me and that for me that's my candle in the dark that's that's why I do what I do um, because I know what he had to go through and I know things he couldn't do at the same age um, and, and so for me it was it's uh, you know I, I love what I do I love being an educator um, I love chemistry I love STEM I know this is a biology organization I always tease biology majors and biology folks about you know the reason you're not a chemistry major is because you couldn't pass physical chemistry so i like to tease biology folks all the time but yeah this is this is kind of what i do i i, I do enjoy uh, being able to speak to others and and, and talk to former students and then uh, new students and then really hear what they have and you know if i if they ask my opinion I'll, I'll give it and share kind of my experiences and why i make a particular decision but i know i have a very finite amount of time and so um, I don't know um, if there are questions uh, to move on or anything like that, but certainly I'll be willing to answer any questions you may have. Got one question. How do we manage work and family life? Sometimes poorly. Sometimes you can do it very well. I know, you know, as a sophomore, junior in high school, I'll tell you what I, so, so again, my high school is only juniors and seniors. So I'm recruiting current 10th graders. So I literally have been going out the last month or two to different high schools that feed into my program. Um, to talk to students and I'll tell you that when, when once we have our incoming class my counselor and I we sit down excuse me we sit down with all the incoming students and the first thing I show them a slide on is about time management and that is singularly probably the most important thing that you all need to learn quickly 
you know, you all have phones. You certainly are on Zoom at the moment. You got laptops. You've got virtual calendars. You know, to to to, to try not to sound like your parents. I will tell you, the faster that you can learn to manage your time and manage it well, the better off you are. You know, whether that's saying, hey, I get out of high school at 2.20. So from 2.20 to 3.20, I've got to do this. Uh, 3.20 to the 5, I've got practice. You know, I've got this homework. I've got that homework. Use your calendar app. It's, it's you know, I'm a wannabe golfer. Um, and, and so practice makes perfect, right? And so it's one of those repetitive things. The more you do it, the easier it is. Um, certainly if it's not something you do, um, if you procrastinate, you will struggle as you start to get through high school and as you start to have assignments and overlapping deadlines do. I've got a calendar. It's got, I mean, I have like four or five emails, um, addresses, and I've got a calendar with all kinds of colors and, and things to remember things like this. And it's really important for me um, that I stay on top of that because you do have a balance. And I, I, you know, the things that my son does are important. You know, he, he plays golf. He's on a high school sports team. And so trying to remember when his his requirements are, he's not driving yet. So obviously I've got to take him around. And, and you know, these are all things that are really important. And, um, you know, if they're important to you, you'll make the time, you'll figure out the time to make it work. But you've got to have a balance. You've got to figure out ways to, to maximize time to do other things. I'll tell you the story I tell all my incoming students. Again, I was a track and field coach. The most successful um, female track and field athlete to come out of Virginia um, and one of the most successful in high school um, track and field, a young lady named Sheena Johnson. She uh, graduated in 99, uh, 99, 2000, I think it was. She was, she won 17 state titles um, in track and field. Uh, was for an All-American multiple times, national champion, Penn Relay champion, went to UCLA on a full ride, uh, won a national championship there, to Olympic trials four times. Uh, Olympics three times and won the silver medal in the Olympics in the, in the 400 hurdles. Uh, ran for Nike for about a decade. Amazing kid, ridiculously bright, uh, no different than any one of you guys. But what really impressed me about her was when we take these long bus rides to some of these track meets, um, you know, three, four, five hours, the first thing she would do when she got on the bus was sit behind the coaches um, because she would do her homework. And she knew that she had to maximize that time when she wasn't doing anything to make sure that that she could stay on top of it because when she got off the bus wherever we're going it was about business and she needed to do work right she had to do work on the track and um that always impressed me and i tell that story all the time because for her it was it was really important for her to balance what she needed to do um it's easy to go to sleep it's easy to be on your phone it's easy to to be texting and, and doing all the things that we can do on our phones it's a bit more challenging it takes a bit more discipline to not do that, right? And to be able to do some work and, and, and take advantage of the time. So that that's really what you've got to think about is, is you've got to be able to say no, you know, to things. Like you can't always go out to party. You always can't, you can't be on your Xbox for four hours, you, you know, you, maybe an hour. You've got to balance that. You've got to be able to say, no, I've got some responsibilities. And, and that's what's important because all those other things will be around. They're not going to go away. So, so that's what I would offer for, for that balance. Um, is, is to really start focusing on your time management skills, um, use your calendars, be able to say no. So in the sciences, you said that your path was geared towards chemistry. Like, how did you narrow down? Like, was it in high school? Was it in college that you, like, were able to narrow down what type of science you were interested in? And do you have recommendations for, like, opportunities that students can pursue even in high school so that they can figure out for themselves what path is right for them? Yeah, for me, I, I, I knew I knew early. I knew it, and like I said, in elementary and middle school that I liked chemistry. Um, it's not that I disliked biology or physics or other things. But, you know, like I said, it was a chemical a chemistry set that I got as a gift. And that I was just kind of caught my eye. And it was one of those things I really liked to fiddle with. Um, and so as, you know, I went through high school, um, it was just chemistry. I didn't know organic or physical or anything like that. But as I started to take classes, junior, senior in high school, and then the first couple of classes in college, you start figuring it out, right? Like, okay, I, like, for me, I was more hands-on, lab-based. I wasn't, I didn't want to be math-based. I wasn't a physical chemist. And so for me, that's the direction that I wanted to go. For, for students, the students that are part of this, there, there are a lot of opportunities in, in, uh, during the summer. Um, I'm constantly pushing opportunities to, to my students for summer internships. And, and so the things that you have to look about is uh, perhaps what's in your area. You maybe got to think outside the box because I'm fortunate in that 
our school is located in an area where I've got like a Lockheed Martin and, and Micron and, and these billion dollar multinational corporations kind of right around me. Um, and they're always looking for students to support some summer stuff, but their local colleges. Um, I know when I was in school, um, high school and in college, um, local colleges had opportunities for summer programs, you know, local businesses did, um, you know, maybe if you're interested in biology, maybe the local hospital, you can like candy stripe, right? Maybe you can be a volunteer during the summer at the hospital, right? And be able to think maybe it's at a vet, uh, you know, veterinarian or whatever. And so sometimes you, you got to kind of be okay with somebody saying no, and then kind of keep knocking on doors and figuring something out using uh, leveraging your resources, your counselors, your school counselors are amazing for things like this. You know, you got to ask them though. You cannot be quiet about it. You've got to be proactive. It's not just going to come and knock on your door. And so I, I think you've got to figure out, um, you may not know right now what you, what you like or what you don't like, but you can certainly try and that's data. Maybe you do something for a summer and you hate it. Okay. Well then you move something else, right? But it's still experience. It's still data. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the direction I always point my students at is to really start um, looking, um, you know, you can look online, certainly, but look at the local businesses that you have. If you don't have transportation or, you know, transportation, you know, you look at what's, what's something you can either get to by, by, by public transportation, by walking, maybe your parent can drop you off, something like that. Um, you know, figure out what, what works for you uh, locally. Um, and then there's some that will pay for you to come and stay. There's certainly some summer programs out of here in Virginia. We have what are called summer residential governor schools. So there's like a, a residential school for medicine and they, they pay you to go down there. You go down to a college and you stay there for six weeks and, you know, you don't pay anything, but you're doing research and you're, you're, you're hanging out with other kids your age. Um, you get a college experience while you're there. So there's programs like that and lots of states have those. They may not call them the same thing, but look at your local colleges and perhaps maybe somewhere that you're interested in attending. Look there, see if they have paid opportunities. So, so that's what I would say for that. Do I know any programs available as high schoolers that would um, look good to college? Well, there's lots. Uh, and so the, so that's the thing, uh, Elijah. You, you're going to have to dig. It really, so some of the things you perhaps, you, 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 again, you may not know the answers, you know, think about, okay, where perhaps do I want to go to school, right? So if there are some schools that come to mind immediately, certainly look there. Look look up some opportunities at Penn State or whatever schools you you have to be interested in wherever you're located. Start there. But yeah, there are definitely internships that, but they're going to be, they're going to be keyed in on things that you're interested in. So if it's STEM, there's certainly things. There's robotics. There's internships in labs. I know, I'll just use another example. So George Mason University has a program called Aspiring Scientist Summer Internship Program. It's called ASIP. Um, and they bring in specifically high school students and then younger college students to do research with a matched PI, a primary investigator. And so they bring it and they pay a little bit of money. And, and so you're all you're doing is having to get back and forth to campus. So that's something that's available. And so you, you're going to have to do a little bit of digging. And this is most definitely the time to do that. Start now because they're, they're going to be filling these up pretty quickly. Um, but look at local businesses that perhaps um, have something that you're interested in, whether it's engineering or whatever the case may be that you're interested in. You got to do a little bit of digging in the area. And, and the things you have available with Google and, and, and search engines we didn't have growing up. I didn't have all that. And so it was a bit more phone calls and all these sorts of things. Um, so I think you definitely have some opportunities to, to dig around a little bit. Do I have any advice for freshmen pursuing their desired career? Yeah, I think I think you're not going to become an expert at anything in high school. So try a lot. There's lots of classes. You, your schedule usually is pretty flexible with electives. Try things that you're interested in. Maybe it's an engineering course, maybe it's, you know, I don't know if you have like Project Lead the Way or something like that in your school. You got to look at your high school course catalog and figure out and go through. I know I did this for a fact. I took my high school course catalog. I went and circled things that I was interested in. Like, okay, what could I, what could I um, take, right? And, and a lot of schools now have opportunities to take duly enrolled courses, maybe do a local community college, okay, or local school to be able to do some things too, where you can also earn a college credit while you're still in high school. But that's where I would first start is, is you know, you, you certainly know things that perhaps are interesting or maybe sound interesting. Take your high school course catalog, go through it and say, hey, these are things I'm interested in. And then you go talk to your counselor and say, hey, can I build a schedule book around to be able to try to take some of these things, right? And so it really is, you know, about what are options. Sometimes they may be in, um, you know, CTE courses, career in tech ed, right? Maybe you want to look at welding or plumbing or, you know, there's lots of really neat things that, um, schools offer um, that you just have to look at and you have to take some time to, to figure out if you can get it into your schedule. So that's where I would start. And then are there any residential programs for freshmen? 
Sometimes. So it really depends on, on, I don't know what state you're in. You're going to have to, to, to speak probably to your counselor. Sometimes the challenge with freshmen, I know in the sciences is because of your age, um, they get a little nervous about going being in labs and college college labs. So, it, which is part of the reason why my program, for instance, is always for um, juniors and seniors. Because if you're you know get below 15, 16, they get a little nervous about liability and things like that. It has nothing to do with necessarily intelligence. It's simply about age. Um, and so, um, so I'm sure there are. And I know there's summer programs, whether it's you know robotics and things like that. And then with their residential, maybe, maybe not. You're going to have to dig around a little bit. Usually, some camps and things like that. They're they're not probably as long as some of the other residential programs. Maybe they're a week, maybe two weeks. So I know I've seen some things that my my son was interested in um, the last couple of years. So again, you've got to kind of dig around and have an idea about where are you comfortable going. What it, what is the program about? Is there a cost? Because sometimes it's only a cost out of pocket and, and, you know, depending on your situation, you may not uh, can afford it. And so, I mean, those are all things you have to consider. Some of them have some paid pieces where they offer scholarships. I know MIT, for example, has some really interesting programs, you know, during the summer uh, for for uh, young women, for minorities, you know, that they bring kids up. You know, some of them are online, you know, with COVID, that's actually opened up some doors to do things virtually, to be able to participate in programs. Um, at different schools, but you don't have to be there, but you're still required to maybe be online at a certain time and you're taking some courses and things like that. So um, there's some flexibility, but you also have to be flexible with with what you want as well. Someone asked um, what the program was called that you were referring to, uh, the ASIP program? Oh, that's at George Mason. It's it's ASSIP, the Science mm -hmm. STEM Scientist Internship Program, I think. that That's typically though, for like I said, for juniors and seniors, they may take sophomores. You have to look. I don't. I don't know the the bottom end of the the range, but they they do require you though typically to be in the area to be able to go to different campuses and things like that. Um, but they do. I know offer some some options for some things. But you've got to look. You've got to look that up and see exactly what the criteria are. I think someone just posted a question. Do you uh, know of any programs where the freshman could sit in? Ooh. on an operation or potentially scrub in surgeons? So I've actually had a bunch of my classmates are actually surgeons. Um, so again, you get into liability issues there, having certain aged folks in the room who aren't are certified to be in the room. Um, now, there are teaching hospitals that have viewing opportunities, you're going to have to, you're going to have to check at your local hospital, but yeah, scrubbing in, I would, I would, I would doubt that because they're not going to let you touch anything because uh, again, because of, of lots of reasons, but I know Certainly, there are opportunities. I used to see it on um, TV shows all the time where you can see be kind of their rooms that oversee a, a surgical room. And so perhaps there's some opportunities there. But again, you know, age sometimes pays. I know I know that we keep picking on freshmen, but age age does play a role in some of these these things being able to happen or not. But yeah, I would check with your local hospital and I'd start there or even something even simpler. Talk to your local doctor, whoever your personal physician is see what they know because many times they're tied in with the hospital and can let you know if there's an opportunity to do something like that but most of the teaching i know most of the teaching hospitals are tied in with universities uh, because that's what they do they've got to be able to, to let folks see and, and that sort of thing so if you have a university that happens to be close that has a hospital tied into it there may be a chance there but i can't say yay or nay for for that mm -hmm.